Happy Saturday morning, everybody. Mike here, and I'm standing in front of one of the many banners we have in the youth room about the persecuted church, reminding us to pray for those who are persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ, for those who do not have the privilege of worshiping in a free country like we do, where we can gather together and we can worship God and not fear what it's really going to cost us, the way that millions and millions of Christians around the world fear on a daily basis. This morning I want to share with you a story of a guy I'm going to name John. It's taken from the Open Doors USA website. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about this man named John and about what's taking place in Sub-Saharan Africa. And I'm going to have some video footage from the Open Door USA website, which doesn't show John himself, but it shows you some of the conditions that our brothers and sisters in Christ find themselves in in Africa just because of their faith. When 22-year-old John from Ethiopia accepted Jesus, he knew he was likely losing his Muslim family who would see his decision as a betrayal to their family and their tribe. And he was right. But not only was he shunned by his family, John's community expelled him. In part of Ethiopia, where John lives, Christians are denied access to community resources and are ostracized from society, effectively cutting him off from help or support. He doesn't share details, but after John was shunned, he found refuge with other believers. Now, under government-imposed coronavirus restrictions, life has changed once again for John. His struggle to live has become that much more difficult. Because his own family has turned their backs on him and the Christians he knows are now living hand to mouth due to not being able to work, John is struggling to find enough food to eat. He is one of hundreds of thousands of believers throughout Sub-Saharan Africa who are not only persecuted for their decision to follow Jesus, but are now doubly vulnerable to the impact of a global pandemic. While the coronavirus pandemic has hit Asia, Europe, and North America with full force, Sub-Saharan Africa home to 1.1 billion people, is only at the beginning of the crisis. Four of the five most virus-vulnerable countries, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Nigeria, Sudan, and Cameroon, also count among the places in sub-Saharan Africa where life is hardest for Christians. Though the 54 countries in sub-Saharan Africa are in the early days of the coronavirus pandemic, Persecuted Christians like John are already feeling the effects. For Christians who are already persecuted, the pandemic gives way to even more ways believers can be discriminated against, exploited, and attacked for their faith. Believers from towns in northern Nigeria report they get six times smaller rations from the state than Muslim families. Believers shared that a Christian family of four receives a grossly inadequate ration of a single packet of noodles and one small plate of uncooked rice. Again, while many in America are frustrated with the pandemic and things that are taking place, disappointed that we haven't been able to meet together in person to attend church during this time of social distancing, I'd like us to remember that there are Christians around the world who are facing much dire circumstances than we are. So again today, I am asking you to pray. I'm calling on you to pray for the persecuted church around the world, many of whom suffer regularly, and now because of this pandemic, suffer even more than they have before. So please spend some time praying today for John, for the Christians in Sub-Saharan Africa and around the world who suffer because they will not deny Jesus as their Lord and Savior. 